Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about the cardinal flower. When it comes to flowers, each is beautiful in its own way. Even if the plant isn't showy, when examined up close, you can often find something attractive or interesting. But the flower I'm going to talk about today doesn't require a close inspection to see how beautiful it is. From my viewpoint, it is in a class all by itself. Quite possibly the most elegant of any flower native to North America, the cardinal flower produces deep shades of red that make it a beacon to hummingbirds, and we're going to cover all aspects of this beauty. This will be a complete profile on this native plant, including what it is and why you should grow it, growing conditions and identification, growing from seed and saving seed, the wildlife and garden uses, and then we will review. So I hope you stick with me as we dive into this amazingly beautiful flower. So what is the cardinal flower? Well, the cardinal flower is a short-lived perennial or biennial native to much of North America. Scientifically, it's known as Lobelia cardinalis, and it will grow to three to four feet tall in full sun and moist to medium moist soil. Its natural home is along creeks, rivers, ponds, and bodies of water. And if you happen to be near a trout stream in late summer, you may find this beauty rising above the grasses and foliage putting on a show. Benefits. Beauty. The cardinal flower has just about the most beautiful and stately flower structure that I've ever seen. And this striking red color is such a deep shade of red, it's just gorgeous. Almost like a work of art. Arranged at upward angles along the stalk, they just look magnificent. A cluster of these plants really puts on a show. Hummingbirds. The cardinal flower is one of the most reliable attractors of hummingbirds you could have in the garden. Its red color draws in hummingbirds from afar, and if you have several plants blooming, you are guaranteed morning visits and throughout the day as nectar is replenished. Wet soil. Sometimes we run into a situation where we have consistently wet or moist soil, or maybe we just happen to have a body of water. And the cardinal flower will do great in moist to wet soil. I've encountered this plant growing right next to water multiple times. And I would like to point out that this entire video does exist as an article at my website. I will link to it below and you may wish to bookmark it for a quick reference later on. And if you guys are liking this video, please click the thumbs up. It really does help me out and I greatly appreciate it. Identification and characteristics. The central stalk will grow two to four feet tall depending on the sunlight available. It'll be light green in color and should have some very tiny hairs. For leaves, cardinal flower is going to have a set of basil leaves that will sit on the ground and actually persist all winter. Leaves along the stem are arranged alternately, so one on one side, one on the other. They will be four to six inches long by one to one and a half inches wide. And they're going to be lanceolate in shape, which is kind of like a spearhead. They will have very serrated margins or edges, but I'll have more to say on the leaves in a bit once we get into the life cycle of this plant. So the central stalk will terminate into a spike that produces numerous flowers arranged in a raceme. The flowers are held at upward angles, and this probably means more nectar can be held in the reservoir. I don't know this for sure, it's just based on observation and a good guess. This flower really does resemble a cardinal. The corolla is standing tall and then curling downwards, where the tip is black and gray, similar to a cardinal's eye. And then it will be flanked by two lateral lobes that uh, hang down almost like wings. And then the lower lip with three lobes, it, it could resemble tail feathers. Flowering lasts approximately six weeks, blooming from bottom to top along the stalk. For reference, I'm in zone six and it usually starts flowering in July, continuing well into August. And about one to two months after flowering, seed pods or capsules will form on the stalks where the flowers were. And for roots, the cardinal flower will produce a small taproot Growing conditions. For growing conditions, the cardinal flower can grow from full sun to partial shade. For moisture, it needs continual access to moisture. This plant is not drought tolerant, so you can grow it in regular flower beds or drier areas as long as you provide supplemental water. For soil types, it does well in most of them. It can go in sandy soils that drain fast as long as it's you know near water, and thicker soils they're fine. I mean, I grow these in compacted sandy loam and it behaves like clay and I just water it when I need to. How to grow it from seed. 
The seeds of cardinal flower are tiny. I mean, they are like powder. To break dormancy of these, these need exposure to sunlight and will have a much higher germination rate from a cold moist stratification period. You know, think about the regular life cycle of this plant. In the winter, the seed pods open up and distribute their seed. Those seeds sit on top of the soil all winter long, and then they germinate in the spring. Well, we have to do that as well. I have videos on both cold moist stratification in the fridge and winter sowing, but with these seeds, I would strongly suggest you try to winter sow them. The seeds are so tiny, it'd be really difficult to do this in the fridge outside of just putting a pot with the seed planted in the fridge for you know one to two months and then taking it out in the spring and even if you did that you'd probably want to sprinkle cinnamon on top of the soil as well to help keep fungus down but it, based on my opinion and my experience this is a plant that really should be winter sown or sown directly sown outdoors in autumn i have a detailed video on winter sowing i will link to below but to actually plant the seeds you just fill a suitable container with moist potting soil then scatter the tiny seeds on top Try not to over sow these. Um, it's really hard not to though, so don't worry if you do. Every time I've grown any member of the Lobelia genus, I've always over sown. The seeds are just too tiny. Once germination occurs, you're faced with a choice of thinning or separating seedlings, which you absolutely should do because crowded seedlings do not grow large. Once you see a third leaf on the seedlings, you can start to think about you know, doing this. Separating these tiny seedlings is challenging, but it can be done. I detail this in a video I have on separating seedlings. I'll put a timestamped link below in that video where I show exactly how to separate these Lobelia seedlings. But I use tweezers and I'm just very gentle and careful. But you can also directly sow the seed. I've done this in the fall by just sprinkling seed in disturbed areas. I did it in my backyard wildflower garden, not knowing if anything took. And then lo and behold, I was surprised that the following year with uh, some blooms. But for direct sowing, you know, if it's a disturbed area, just scatter the seed in the winter and hopefully you get some uh, germination the following spring. Saving seed from the cardinal flower is pretty easy. About a month or two after blooming, where the flowers were, a small capsule will form and that capsule will contain a lot of seeds. So to save the seeds, get yourself a large paper bag or a bucket and cut the stalk below the pods. If you're harvesting in winter, many of the pods are probably open. Carefully place them into the bucket or bag, taking care not to tip the stalk upside down until over the bag, as much as the seed may fall out otherwise. Leave the stalks to dry somewhere cool and dry for like a week. And then to collect the seed, you could probably just shake the bag a little bit and empty the contents onto a paper plate. Use a fine kitchen strainer with another plate to sift out some of the chaff and you're pretty much done. If you just want a few seeds though, you can probably get a, a single stalk or carefully break off a few of the capsules and place them directly into a bag and then again, let it dry out and repeat this process. You know, you can just squeeze an individual pod and allow the seed to fall right out. And again, look how tiny these seeds are, it's incredible. It's actually amazing that we can actually see the texture through my little pocket microscope thing. Store dried seed in a Ziploc bag in a dark place that's cool and dry. Okay, so for establishing cardinal flower, if you transplant your seedlings out early or have direct sown, then you might be able to get a flowering stalk in the first year. Otherwise, you can expect flowering stalks in year two. Now, I'm gonna give you some very important information. Uh, cardinal flowers will have basil leaves on top of the soil over the winter. It is important that they don't get completely covered up with mulch or leaves or other refuse, as this could possibly smother the plant. These basil leaves will remain all winter long. It's okay if they get snowed on, but there's something we should really keep in mind with this flower, is that in the beginning of the video, I said it was a short-lived perennial, and it really is. I rarely have a cardinal flower plant that lives past two years, and I've never had one go beyond four. So if you wanna make this a permanent addition to a flower bed, you should plan on growing them from seed every single year or direct sow in the fall out of caution. And I am no fan of cultivars, and I've never grown these myself, but there are some that exist for cardinal flower, which may be much longer lived. But know that often cultivars do not attract pollinators as well as the straight native species. I'll link to an article that talks more about this below. 
When it comes to wildlife, the cardinal flower is really kind of an, of limited value in terms of the number of species that it serves. Hummingbirds are by far the most frequent visitor I've ever seen, especially in the morning, but throughout the day, hummingbirds will visit, hitting almost every bloom. In addition to hummingbirds, bumblebees and butterflies also visit the cardinal flower. Bumblebees can rob nectar by tearing into the corolla, and swallowtail butterflies like the spicebush swallowtail can reach the nectar reservoir with their long proboscis. But that's about it though. The plant really doesn't attract much else. Deer and rabbits also generally avoid the foliage. You know, you don't necessarily have to spray this one with liquid fence, but if you're already in the business, you may want to do so. For garden uses, cardinal flower is a natural choice for bringing beauty to any flower bed or if you really just want to bring in hummingbirds. It would make an excellent addition to any rain garden as it loves the moisture as well as any body of water. It can also work well in storm drainage, septic fields, or any low spot. And finally, it is possible for a cardinal flower to get foliar disease like leaf spot. This has never been fatal to the plant in my experience. It's just cosmetic and usually only happens later in the season. Okay, it's time to review. The cardinal flower is a short-lived perennial native to North America. It grows two to four feet tall in wet to medium moist soil and is not drought tolerant. It should be winter sown or direct sown in the fall and planted on the surface of the soil. And it really brings in hummingbirds, but not that much else. Okay, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button as that really does help me out. Again, all this information exists as an article on my website, which I will link to below. And there's a few other videos that can help you along with the cardinal flower, namely winter sowing and separating seedlings. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And yeah, you guys all have a good day.